Shalom. All praises go to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Yahweh Double honors unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone for the teachings of the scriptures, among other things. Shalom to the sincere Akim across the world. Now, I wanted to do a quick video about the foundation of the Lord that's being laid down right now, because we in the men days. It's going to be laid down by the Heavenly Father, which sent his son Yahweh Shai, and he sent his apostles and prophets. And they lay down the foundation. That's what the Lord said. If you love me, feed my sheep. Feed my flock. It was John chapter 21 and 16. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of John, as well. Let me go to the chapter itself. John 21 and 15. So when they had dined, Yahweh Shai saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. And here he said it again, Feed my sheep, feed my sheep. I actually typed in feed the flock, but the sheep is the flock. All right, so it says here, Jeremiah chapter 3 and 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith Yahweh, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one from a city, and two from a, of a family, <coughs> and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So that's what we're going to get in the last days. We're going to get men that are eloquent speakers because we lost it and now we're going to get it back and now we're getting it back so that we can teach our people and it's all about that it's all about that because we don't want our people to actually work no more for these Edomites we want to have our own food our own clothing you know because they got they got these type of clothings for our children you know they got a a section in their stores which is sexy kids and babies clothing why these are the type of things that these people are creating and who's buying these stuff the, the mothers the mothers are dressing these children like this they have no business walking around like this no business whatsoever and no it's not cute look at this straight up going into some pedophilia type thing so you know what I'm saying so we don't want that we don't want that for our people. We don't want to have to, you know, these people are feeding us. They're clothing us. They make the clothing that they put in the store and then we just have to take it. That's why you got a lot of, a lot of our people. <clears throat> you got a lot of our people wearing skinny jeans. And skinny jeans was the thing of uh, females back in the days, which is leggings. Which they're not even supposed to be wearing. Because we can see a shape. It all goes back to the nakedness of the Greeks and all that there, right? So we don't want that. We want our own housing, uh, 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 by the way. You know, because they put us in these houses that you don't even like. Let's say let's say they make you go and watch. Let's say you get an opportunity to get one of these houses. Okay, so you go there. And then you see the inside and then you be like, oh, I don't like it. And then you go here. And then you see the inside, I mean, oh, God, no, I don't like it. Okay, then you go here, and then you see the inside. Uh, you know, they keep on telling you, okay, we got a free location over there. Why don't you have a look? And then, you know, uh, I got a free location over here. And then you have a look. And then of all the places, maybe you went to 10 houses before you actually saw something that you kind of like. You walk up in that house, and you'd be like, hmm, I feel comfortable over here, around here. I'll take this one. That's not your choice. He put choices for you. Because if you really had a choice, you would build your house yourself. But you can't do that because he's on stolen land. And he's talking about, no, you, you can't just build here. You need a permit for that. And even if you have a permit, there, are, there aren't permits where you could just go and build yourself a house on this land that they stole. So, we don't want that. We want our people to have our own things in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh But we got to get back to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh
by listening to his words and taking heed unto the prophets, the apostles, their words coming out their mouth, sorry, the word of the Lord coming out the mouth of the prophets. <clears throat> and you have false prophets in the midst of us. So it is up to you to see which one is which. And we pray that the Heavenly Father guide you with that, you know. We, we pray we're being guided with that, starting with the elder apostles on down in Great Millstone in America. Nowhere else, because that's where the Heavenly Father chose to woke, wake up the Israelites. He woke them up there, right? Isaiah 3 and 1, For behold, Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay of the staff. So no more... The staff represents, you know, prophets. Because a prophet walks around, walked around with a staff and just the spiritualness on the right side, right? The whole stay of bread, which is the stability of bread. That's why we need their food. And the whole stay of water, which is also going... The, the bread and the water is uh, symbolically also for this truth, which is also what the staff represents also, symbolically, and the righteousness. But it also is literally, because we... Which one of you can feed our own people? You can't. You might have certain jakes that have bakeries and stuff like that and that sell water, but where do they get it from? Where do they get that water from? Do they go to these springs in the mountains and then they go fill them up themselves and then they bottle them and then they bring it to us? No. They buy from the Edomites that do that. Same thing with the food. You might have places that be selling food, you know, but, or making it even, but where you get your ingredients from, you still go to these Edomites. You don't plant stuff and then you go farm it yourself. And even if you do, you're still not the boss of it because you're still paying rent. You know, all that there, all that there, right? So the Most High, he, he took that away, but he's going to give it back. You see the Lord take it, but he give it back. The Lord give it and take, the Lord give it and take it. But he giveth it back. And that's the part where we are in right now. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 until verse 14. Is going to be in full effect soon enough. In the name of Yahweh, Basha, Mehashai. Now it says here, second, the mighty men, Isaiah 3 and 2. And the man of war. All of this, all of, all of these things were taken from us, right? The judge, we don't have men of war no more that can protect our people. And the mighty men, yeah, we have them. Like, for example, the so-called bronze, whatever. All these athletes of ours. You know? And the prophet. And the prudent. And the ancient. And the ancient always has wisdom. As they've been around. They have experienced prudent. Acting with or showing care and thought for the future. The ones that think before they do something. We had a lot of great people in our midst. But the Heavenly Father doth take it away. And now we're stupid. We don't think. For example, the clothing that I just showed you, what's they, what they're buying for their children. You're, you're not prudent, man. You don't think with care for the future. You don't think like, hey, wait a minute. If I dress her up now, she's going to be shameless later. going to be a beast because they, they're going to think like this is the normal way to actually portray yourself upon the planet Earth. And then you're going to go walking around with see-through see -through leggings. You know what I'm saying? And think and, and think nothing is wrong. Right? You know what I'm saying? And think nothing is wrong. Walking around like this upon the planet Earth. You know, stuff like this, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And think that this is normal. This is not normal, man. It's a sexualization of... You're making your daughter a whore. The Israelite daughter. That's what you're doing. These other nations... <laughs> It, they don't matter, man. Let them do what they do. They, they, this, ain't, this isn't about them. This is about us. What we have and what we do not have. Which is prudent men. And the men of war. And the judges and the prophets. But they're coming back, by the way. All this is coming back. Because the Lord gave it back, right? Right, theory. The captain of 50 and the honorable man. And the counselor. The honorable man. A lot of, a lot of our people are not honorable because... They don't have dignity. They would just sleep with your wife. 
you have no honor, man. You're a demonic person and you're not a leader or, or, or in this case, a captain. Because a, a, a lot of our people was actually natural born leaders, man. That's why they hate us and they feared us so much back in the ancient days. But now they're going to, they're going to, man, they were not going to be able to hate us. They're only going to be able to fear us. The heathen shall envy thee and shall be able to do nothing. Second Esther chapter 2, verse 28. <clears throat> the heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, save Yahweh Bashem Yahashai. We're waiting for that day. And the counselors, and the cunning artifact, uh, artificer. What was the artificer again? Wait, sorry. Let me double check that. Oh, uh, skilled, yeah, skilled, but yeah, basically skilled, all right, all right, all right. A skilled craftsman or inventor, you know, our people, our people have invented a lot of things, for example, George Washington Kava and all his inventions, and he all, he made stuff from, he made the strongest car, well, he had the plan. Because they never say that Henry Ford created the soya bean car. Soya beans car. Soya bean inventions. More than the peanut man. That's what they always want to uh, make us think that we are. He used to make alternative stuff. Alternative uses for sweet potatoes, soya beans. Yes, peanuts. Everybody know that. But... There's many more things that our people invented. You know, he and he's just one. You got the real McCoy, and they was bullying him, talking about and, uh, that he <clears throat> was talking to plants. You know, see, he's the real plant man. Okay, man. Yara what is I'm trying. I already uploaded a few documents about him. Now, this is him. And it was a lot of beautiful things that he actually created. For example, a car that couldn't be dented and it was made out of soya beans. Here, here. Car. Don't forget the soya bean. George Washington Coffer also did a lot of research on another Lou Jean. Whatever that is. Oh, the, the soya bean. He discovered that it also was an important source of protein and oil. He helped develop soya beans as a major crop in the United States. And he even worked with his friend, Henry Ford. He only knew him when he was 70, so that's not his friend. Uh, George, Carver, George Washington Carver was 70 years old when he met Henry Ford to make a car out of soya beans. And that car was so strong, this guy was hitting it with a pickaxe. And that's, that's Henry Ford, if I'm correct. Yeah, Henry Ford. And they say it's his car. It's not his fucking car. He was the one. He's the genius. He's the inventor. Just like the real McCoy. Just like the real McCoy. Look. No. Oh, here it is. He looked like a Jake that I just that I know actually. <laughs> you know, he has that he has that face. Right. But he invented a lot of things too, man. The real McCoy is an idom and metaphor used in much of the English-speaking world to mean the real thing or the genuine article. That is, he is the real McCoy. E.g. is that is. The phrase has been subject, the subject of numerous false etymologies. Yeah, according to you devils, because history is written by the victor, by the conqueror, not the conquered. But we know the truth. Because they can't block the truth forever. But let me go on back to the this because I'm jumping around. But the point of the bringing up this is that he is an inventor, very smart. And that's that's how our people were. Very brilliant. Hey, he, you, oh, there's the word brilliant. George Washington's coffers brilliant work being applied today. They stole it because his family is supposed to be, reap the the benefits of it. They're not doing that. And what it is, is 
you had cars back in those days and you also had electric cars chargeable cars chargeable cars in the nine electric cars in the 1920s they already had that so these people these Edomites they've been having that technology and nowadays where is it there is a picture where the cars were charging it's already had this man so now you're talking about the Tesla cars and stuff like that these things was already in motion Wait. but Esau he wanted to monopolize upon it he wanted to make mad money on it oh I got it here look see that this thing it, it was charging and then you could see the thing that I just clicked before look look at it here this was the charging station for the car and then you have this car this thing look at here and this is a photo from the 1920s and look at it here again look the cord there was charging cars back in those days already but they took this technology out because he can't he can't monopolize it he can't really make mad money on it because you could just charge it at home well in this case not home but over there he just can't he just couldn't charge you that much because it's electricity electricity you know he needed to monopolize everything and then later in the future he's gonna bring it back there's no new thing under the sun these devils have already you know monopolized everything right and to our people because they stole our, our inventions they always did and they always uh, will keep on trying until Yahweh Shai says no but until Yahweh says, says no and sends Yahweh Shai to come and destroy him right but yeah that's it about that and then you have this car like I was talking about nowadays them cars if you just uh, lean on it with your elbow you can dent the car and the car will cost thousands of dollars to actually get that dent back out but here he's hitting a, a, a car made by soya beans with a pickaxe and not even a dent or a scratch could come up on that car you know what that means man that means you would have a car that would run for really 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 long man it's a, like almost impossible to break oh is that almost you can't do that with a regular car now hitting hitting it with a pickaxe and this is a pickaxe this he was hitting it with this with the sharp side and it was not getting dents or scratches um, so yeah being cars modern where is it mm, man I can't find it right now maybe, maybe yeah it's the what you call that thing again John Leno or something if I'm correct his name is John Lennon or something. No, no. Yeah, this guy. He or Jay Leno. Or the soya bean car. He he went around and he, he showed that. But then again, yeah. I have the video in the lists before this, so yeah. Anyway, you also had the hen up cars, but yeah, yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Let me just finish this up. So basically, cutting artifacts, right? The Heavenly Father took that away, but he's bringing it back. He's going to bring it back. And the eloquent orator, orator is somebody that talks, orator, a public speaker, right? And eloquent is somebody that can convince you. <laughs> Clearly expressing, or not convince you, but yeah, he's just a. Uh, he just explain stuff clearly expression or indication of something indicating of something fluent or persuasive in speaking or writing and that's what the prophets will do because the Lord said 
Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 And I will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding and we in that time right so yeah concerning going back to over here well it says this Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 but now in Yahweh Shai ye whom sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Yahweh Shai so the ones that were far off from Yahweh Shai you know whether it be physical or and whether it be um, spiritual because a lot of our people grew, grew up with the Caesar Borgia and with them Christmas things and Bugs Bunny, no, uh, Easter Bunny, <laughs> Bugs Bunny. Might as well call it Bugs Bunny, right? You're far away from Yahweh Shai, but now we are being brought nigh through the blood of Yahweh Shai. For he is our peace who had made both one and had broken down, in, uh, had broken down the middle wall and portion between us of partial uh, partition sorry of partition between us because we hate each other the northern tribe and the southern tribe and also the israelite foreigners the israelite gentiles you know we're actually separated from each other even even the tribes of for example mm -hmm. dominican republic and haiti they're hating each other even though they're the same of the same nation but they do not like it when you call them when you call a dominican a haitian they get offended it's like a cuss word. It's like you call them a, a nigga or something, just something like that, you know? Like you and Edomite and you calling them that, right? So, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, <laughs> which is beginning with ourselves and the things that we do and just the evil of this world, even the law w which we break, so that's the enmity within our flesh also, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And by the way, that's why when you come up in Yahweh Shai, you are a new man. And because he is within us. Just like the book of John chapter 10 says concerning that. Uh, he said that, the, oh no, John chapter 17, sorry. In John 17 and 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Holy Father, keep through thine own name, Yahweh, those who thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. So we are one with Yahweh Shai. Right? And Yahweh Shai is one with the Father. And thus we are all one in Yahweh Basham Shai. Uh, with the father I'm looking for something yeah here it says um, John 10 and 30 I and my father are one it doesn't mean that they're one it means like they are of one mind just like how the apostles are all one that doesn't mean we turned into brood because brood is maximus Right, but it doesn't mean like we turn into Bruticus Maximus, Maximus. Right, which is this, and then they, you know, they get together and then they form, they turn into this, you yeah. know, right. <laughs> which was though, by the way, back in the day, but yeah, we're not that, but we are in a symbolic way. We are, but not in the physical form. Even as Yahweh Shai and Yahweh are not in the physical form, the same person. Right, so now, uh, what did I just do? Right. So now it says, verse 16, Ephesians 2 and 16, and that he might reconcile both unto Yahweh in one body by the cross that he went on, on having slain the enmity thereby one of them those enmities is death and the fact that we were we were actually supposed to be put to death if we broke the law so he took the death of of us upon himself Isaiah 53 explains that if I'm correct was it Isaiah 53 let me see yeah yeah he was wounded 
uh, Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The, the whippings, the beatings that we were supposed to get. And with his stripes, with his, yeah, he got stripes, he got beat with whips. We are healed. So instead of us being whipped, he got whipped. Yeah, we got whipped in slavery, but not for the whole nations, for our own sins. <laughs> That's something else. 17. And came and preached peace to you, which are which were afar off, and to them that were nigh, nigh, which is close by. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. That's why can two walk together except they be agreed. Yes. Uh, no, they cannot. I mean... But yes, they will if they are if they are agreeing with each other. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, which are the Israelite foreigners. These are the Israelite foreigners, and of the household of Yahweh, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. So, who is laying down the foundation, the apostles and the prophets, because Yahweh Shai Mashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. He's the one that set up the apostles and the prophets to come and to teach the people in the name of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Those that are given unto Yahweh Shai. Right? And I think it was in Luke 7 or something. No, it was 17. John 17, sorry. John 17. I have manifest thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, because they are of the Lord. And now we are be given, and we have been, well, the apostles and, and, and the men of the Lord and the prophets have been given unto Yahweh Shai, right? And they have kept thy word. Right, they're going to keep the word. They're not going to say the book of Hebrews is is not real, or that we shouldn't listen to Paul. They're going to come up with the full doctrine, the whole, the whole truth. Right. Uh, what was I reading again now? Oh, it's right here. Yeah. So from Ephesians two and twenty one, in whom all the building fitly real fittingly like right fitly framed together grow it un, uh, unto an holy temple in Yahweh and we are that holy temple so let me read it again in whom all built uh, sorry in whom all the building fitly framed together grow it unto an holy temple in Yahweh because the Lord said that ye are the temple of the Most High because the Most High dwelleth within you Right, so we are growing into a holy temple, f beautifully fitted, fittingly, real tight fit, real good, and framed beautifully, like a picture on the wall, in Yahweh Basham Yahashai as His temples, which is our bodies. Verse twenty-two: In whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of Yahweh through the Spirit. Because you want the Lord to dwell within you. That's why you're supposed to be built it for in or if, as a habitation of the Spirit. So that the Spirit dwell with you. Wisdom of the Book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter one on you know on down. And also the book of Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus, and that is in the Apocrypha, chapter one. Then you will see that wisdom dwelleth with them that seek her. Wait, let me get that. Book of Sirach in the Apocrypha, where it says here, first one, chapter one, verse twenty-six: If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments. 
and the Lord will give her unto thee. But there was there are so many, but I can't oh yeah, here. Here's good too. Proverbs eight and twelve. I wisdom I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, an evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Mm. Uh, there's another. Sorry. It doesn't jump in my head right now. If I, I, I if I go search for it, I'll find it. But yeah, I hope you know what I'm saying because it says like an um, wisdom dwelleth with uh, the ones that seek her. Now Daniel chapter f nine, verse nine. To the Lord, to the Lord Yahweh, our power, belong mercies and forgiveness. Says. Though we have rebelled against them, <laughs> so still he has mercy and forgiveness. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yahweh, our power, to walk in his laws, which he set forth, sorry, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. So that's why the servants or the prophets, starting with Yahweh, Shah, and and the other apostles on down in Great Millstone in America and stuff like that, and all the apostles that was before them. And the prophets that were before <clears throat> before them and the, and the men of the Lord. All of them is laying down the foundation of who? The Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai himself being the chief cornerstone. He's the he's the one that the apostles and the prophets are leaning upon and the men of the Lord. Because the cornerstone is the chief stone. That is where you have the stability of the house. And in this case is the house of the Lord being built up from the ground up like I said we don't have anything but we're gonna get everything <laughs> Hosea 12 and 10 I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes similitudes as examples or similarities actually the quality or state of being similar to something you know, you're basically showing stuff. Likeness, something that is like this, or the sameness, something that's the same as that. Examples, for example, right? By the ministry of the prophets. First Corinthians 4 and 9. For I think that Yahweh had set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed unto death. Right, because they murdered They wanted to murder them, and they murdered them. And until this day, they want to do them something. In 2021, on uh, 12 July, 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 12 July, right? It says here, For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Yahweh Shai's sake, but ye are wise in Yahweh Shai. Why? Because when they see us on the street, they call us fools, man. They have all these type of names for us, like, these things is crazy. What are y'all doing over here? And you could talk to them, or you could just say something like, uh, but you believe in flying reindeers, right? And then they get to thinking because they're stupid. Some of them really think like, wow, wait a minute. He's actually right. But then again, if the Heavenly Father didn't choose you to listen, you're not going to listen. We are weak, but you are strong, right? We are weak, but then in faith and spirit, oh Lord willing, we're strong, <laughs> You are honorable, but we are despised. Yeah. Lord willing, we have honor. But but they hate us. For example, just an example. It's just one tiny example uh, concerning females, for example. Did you know that if you don't want to have sex with them when they have a boyfriend, they, they want to they cuss you out? They, they say, Bo they, they, they hate your guts. Even other men would be like, man, you sucker, man, why don't you... I would I would be in the dead. You know what I'm saying? You know that man can handle her. I, I, I can handle her better. And you're going to die for the 20 minute huffing and puffing that you was doing. 
that 20 minute uh, huffing and puffing is going to destroy your soul <laughs> for eternity. Why would you want that? A 20 minute blast off for a, yeah, for your soul. Come on, man. I wouldn't do that. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. For Yahweh shall send me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, no fancy words, lest the cross of Yahweh should be made of none effect. Because if baptism saves you and not preaching, which is what we were supposed to be uh, doing, which, which, will, what, let me say it better, which is what we were sent to be to do, which is what the apostles were sent to do, and, and, and in this case, it was the apostle Paul. Not with wisdom of words, because sometimes if you talk too smart, these people don't know what you're saying. Just talk to normal to them. Lest the cross of Yahweh Shai should be made of none effect, right? Because if baptism can save you, then Yahweh Shai's cross would be to none effect. It would be then that it didn't have to exist then, right? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, right? Let me read it again. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Right, because these other people that we preach in the cross, they, they'd be like, what is this? It's foolishness to, to them. But to us it is not. It is the power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. When we're teaching about Yahweh Shai. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent, which is the wicked ones. Because they're smart and prudent too. You know, and, uh, and, uh, and, and he will take away the wisdom of the evil ones that are wise. Because they're, well, w wisdom and wickedness is not wisdom at all. You're just smart and cunning. But if you really was wise, you would know not to do those type of things because you know that the Lord is going to punish you when you trick people. A scam artist, for example. If he's really, if he was wise, he wouldn't do it because there's a there, there's something's gonna happen to you, you know. And by the way, this is also talking about uh, the our people, our people, because at that time they professed themselves to be wise, and they was wise to a certain degree and prudent to another certain degree. But the heavenly father took that away too. <laughs> Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? The ones that write? Where is the disputer of this world? What's the disputer again? Uh, you that thing again. Compete to fight, yeah. It's a like a lawyer or something, you know. Where's the lawyer of this world? Where's the fighter of this world? Dispute. That's French. Disputar. Yeah. Uh, disagreement or argument. Argue about something. To uh, compete for, strive to win. Yeah. Compete for this world, for example, because you have a lot of people that want to defend this world. Right. Where's the disputer of this world? Right? Had not Yahweh made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of Yahweh, the world by wisdom knew not Yahweh. They don't know that believe really It pleased Yahweh by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Like I said, when you when they see us preaching, they they're calling it foolishness. But it's actually here to save souls. Just like Yahweh Shai said, if you love me, go and feed my sheep. Bring them to the barn. Bring them to me. So I may, you know, I may save them. That is his job. He could do it in one blow, but uh, in one finger snap, but he didn't want to do it. He has his men there for, which is all fun and games. It's foolishness. But even the foolishness of the Lord is <laughs> beyond wisdom uh, to men. Well, more... Above all the wisdom that men have, let's, let's say it like that. Now, this is the book of Matthew 19 and 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all, and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Yahweh shall say it unto them, said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. That shows you that reincarnation is going to be, because here it says, in the future, 
in the regeneration when you are washed again re means back and generation means in the, the yeah generation next generation so in the in the back generation when you come back the 12 apostles you're going to be judging the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel you're going to be ruling over, you're going to be above them there goes uh, your reincarnation scriptures Yahweh Shai said that himself right so it says here First Corinthians 17 and 22 for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom, which is the Israelite foreigners that would call themselves Greeks. But we preach Yahweh Shai crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block. That's Yahweh Shai. He was a stumbling block unto the Jews and unto the Greeks, foolishness. Why? Because these people was believing in idols. They was believing in the actual real Edomite Greeks and their idols. That's why they. That's one of the reasons why they wanted to kill Yahweh Shai because. No, it was Jews because. Um, the Romans would come and take away their. Their status and. It says here John eleven forty eight. If we let him, so if the wicked Pharisees let Yahweh Shai. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation, because they was ruling over the people and with lies, which is the Jews, and yeah, they didn't want to lose that. Right, so going on now it says here, first Corinthians seventeen and I think I don't have to read anymore. Well, I'll just read it. Because it's uh, wait, where was I? Right, verse twenty-two, one twenty-four. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, which is the Israelite foreigners, Yahweh Shai, the power of Yahweh and the wisdom of Yahweh, for for those who are called of the Israelites, because the because of the foolishness of Yahweh is wiser than men, and the weakness of Yahweh is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. So a lot, a, a lot of these people that are very smart and doing good in school and stuff like that, they're very wise after the flesh, but they're not wise in a spiritual manner. They're not really called. Not, not a lot of them. But Yahweh had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And Yahweh had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. So, a lot of times you have these so-called smart people that went to school. They call you stupid. <laughs> Especially when you come in with the Bible talking about you don't know nothing. Because in order, to, in order uh, this, uh, according to them, you need to go through their, their so-called proper ways and channels for to become a pastor, which is going to school to learn how to actually fool your people. <laughs> Basically, they're going to school to learn how to be a pastor. That's what they want. All shaved up. You got so-called penguin suit on, so-called nice suits on and stuff like that. With a, with a phallic symbol around your neck, which is a male genital, which is a tie. And then they will respect you. Right? And Yahweh had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Once that time comes, your armies are mighty, your weapons are mighty. The Heavenly Father is going to choose guys that never went to, yeah, I don't know, went to do some badass training or whatever you call it, you know. And they're going to smoke you. And first they're going to do it with the, with the, with the word. Verse 28, and base things of the world and things which are despised, base is low, like basement. And the things that are despised, like us, had Yahweh chosen, those are the ones that the Lord choose, chooses, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. So basically, the people love to say, you're nobody. So to, to, to the world, we're nothings. You're, you're, you're nothing. But that same nothing is going to bring that something to nothing. Extermination. That no flesh should glory in his presence. 
Yeah, because it's all about Yahweh, about Hashem, Yahweh Shai. But of him are ye in, Yeh in the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Because of the Lord, we are real. Because of the Most High Yahweh, he gave us to Yahweh Shai. That's why we're with Yahweh Shai. Lord, Lord willing, we're with him. Who of Yahweh is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption? Who of Yahweh? The, 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 Yahweh Shai. He's the one that is made unto wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Is he? We are made unto that. But Yahweh Shai comes to redeem us. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So if you glory in anything, like man, you boasting or something like that, boast in Yahweh Shai. Right? Second Peter, no, First Timothy. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I come to you, come not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Yahweh. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, and him crucified. So we don't know anything except for yeah, what Yahweh Shai is teaching us, and of his crucifixion, and all that he taught. And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of a man's wisdom, so no fancy words, but in demonstrations, uh, or demonstration of the spirit and power, and of power, and that spirit and power comes from Yahweh. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, that's why we don't listen to you people, you so-called scholars and stuff like that. If the things that we know through the Spirit coincides with the things that you say in the in the flesh, because you went over there and did research and stuff like that, and it, it's uh, it's the same, then we then we could use your your stuff. If it isn't, get 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 get, get from around here, man. Get thee behind me, Satan. Basically, don't stand in front of me. I'm your leader. You don't lead me. Esau, but in the power of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, right, and that's what the apostles on down are doing, and the prophets, they are setting down a path for the rest of the Israelites to walk upon, so that we don't have to depend on these other nations anymore, we will go back to Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai and depend on him, yeah. and that would be dope. That's what we're waiting for. That's what we, that's one of the reasons why we're doing this. Because we don't want to look at these these heathen in our in our midst telling us what to do. You know, the devil tell you like, hey, you can't stand here. Why? Uh, I just don't want you to stand here. And then uh, if you don't leave, we're, we're gonna find you. You know, cool. The scripture does say agree with Chad for very quickly. But it's all good. We're gonna get you back, man. Like, for real. Because they love doing that to our people. If you just chilling was one place, and then they would come like, oh yeah, it's uh, you're kind of scaring the residents over here. Could you just leave from here? What? We didn't do nothing. But anyway, Ezekiel chapter 37, first. Hmm. One, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out of the spirit, out in the spirit of Yahweh, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, by the way, the eye is talking about Ezekiel. And the, the one that talking to him, son of man, is Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh, the power, thou knowest. Thou knowest. Again he said unto him, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. So, again, the prophet Ezekiel is laying down the foundation, the path toward Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai. And the chief cornerstone is Yahweh, Shai. Of the foundation, the, the top stone is Yahweh Shai. 
And thus saith Yahweh the power unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, which is wisdom. And I will lay sinews upon you. I will bring up you bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. That's what we're doing right about now. Because we're them well, we're them dry bones. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. This is about the time that we're waking up right now. You know, waking up out of that eternal sleep that we was in. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them, like their real understanding. Because our people are hearing this truth, okay? Not all of them are understanding. A lot of people, oh, they know about that. They call, they, even bitch ass niggas call us the black Hebrew Israelites. I'm looking at you, I'm like, oh, you say it like how Edomite says it. Cool. I'm no worry, boy, you you going to get yours. But the point is that they know about it. But not all of them have this this wisdom. Of understanding and they will not all get it right then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus saith Yahweh the power come from the four winds of breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army this is that hundred and forty four thousand then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, all twelve tribes. Behold, they say, our bones are dry, because that water is, is this truth. And our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. The twelve tribes is not together anymore. But we're, we're coming together. Amos chapter 9 says so. That among other scriptures. Acts 15 of, of, or 13. 13 also 13 or 15 one of those two therefore prophesy and say unto them thus saith you have the power behold O my people I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring in you and bring you into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your grave O my people and brought you up out of your graves this is what's happening to us right now we are being brought up out of our graves because we are dead. If you believe that you're an African, you're dead. Because the word Africa didn't even exist until them devils went over there and conquered that place and called it after Leo skipping us Africanos. So it says here, And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that Yahweh had spoken it and performed it saith Yahweh. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, and this is about the twelve tribes again, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick, and write it right upon it, for Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick, and write upon it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions. So in total, it is the southern tribe and the northern tribe, which altogether comes in at twelve tribes. And join them one to another into one stick, twelve tribes, and they shall become one in thine hand. And that is his mission. Ezekiel, his mission is to wake up the dead bones that are asleep. And he's, he needs to water them, like how you water a plant. Isaiah chapter 5 shows you that we are a plant as a nation also you shall know a tree by its fruits right so the people can be trees and the fruits are students the ones that learn from you right verse 18 and when the children of thy people shall ask unto thee saying what wilt thou not what uh, sorry wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these by what that stick by this By 
this. This is that stick. Ephraim and all his brethren. Yeah. And Judah and all his brethren. And then put them together. That's that stick. Now we got on cartoon bars. Oh, car not the not cartoon. I oh I always forget this word. This cardboard box of shit, I think it's called cardboard. Now we have it on this cardboard, but uh, no. we were supposed to be putting it on this, you know, board or something. Yeah, you get like this, but you get the picture. What mean is now by that? This, like this, like this. Verse 19 Say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh the power, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, which is the, you know, the ten tribes. Sorry. Right, so it says here. And well, now is nine. Because Dan isn't here. Dan is not mentioned, let me say that. And we'll put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick. And they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. That's why we have the 12 child signs, so that you can see who, we're, who you are as an indication to what we're actually doing and what we're talking about and who is who and what is what so yeah 21 Ezekiel 37 and 21 and say unto them thus saith Yahweh the power behold I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen that's what we're waiting for where the day be gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, no more. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols nor with the detestable things the filthy things our people are doing sexually and all other type of nonsense thievery adultery is just detestable nor with any of their transgressions any of the law breaking eating pork and stuff like that but i will save them out of their dwelling places where we dwell wherein they have sinned right that's why we not in our own land and will cleanse them and we are with them. so they shall be my people and I will be their power Yahweh. and David my servant shall be king over them and they all shall have one shepherd Yahweh they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them because he's gonna print it in us like a computer and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children, forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. <laughs> we can't wait for that day. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them, which is the dwelling place of the Lord. Just all that goes in there with the, with the scriptures. Yea, I will be their power, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. So these heathens, they're going to find out who's who. <laughs> they're not going to like it. They're going to envy us, but they can't do anything. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to leave it with this.
Ephesians 2 and 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles, Yahawashai himself being the chief cornerstone. That foundation is being built in the name of Yahweh Basham Yahashai by pastors. And I will feed you, uh, Jeremiah 3 and 15, and I will feed you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you. Sorry, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And that's that's what the Lord is doing right now. You know, he's building up the foundation of his people. We're going to be uh, built up. We're going to spring roots and, and, and stay, which means which represents stability. Yeah, so we're done. I'm going to say Shalom.